periodic table, which is this right here. The periodic table is a table full of all the known elements. Excuse me, sir? Yes, you at the back? Why does it look so funny? <laughs> well, to explain the shape and everything inside the table, we will have to take us back to when the first periodic table was made. The original periodic table was made by this man, John Newland. He created the table in 1864. The elements were arranged in the table in order of relative atomic mass. He found that each element was similar to the element eight places further on. For example, Li, lithium, Be, beryllium is the second element, B, boron is the third, and Na, sodium, is the eighth element. Newland's table showed a repeating of a pattern of properties, but it had a few problems, such as uranium, U, was put in completely the wrong place, Newland's got the relative atomic mass wrong. He also put iron in the same group as oxygen. How did Newland's table get to what it is today? Well, a scientist five years later called Dmitry Mendeleev came up with a new way of ordering the elements, still using Newland's table idea. Dmitry Mendeleev had 77 elements to work with, however, rather than Newland's 62. People say that Dimitri came up with the idea for the new periodic table in a dream. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium. Every time a new element is found, it is put in the on the periodic table in order of its relative atomic mass. This is how we got the periodic table we see today. Now, I've used the phrase relative atomic mass quite a lot, and you might be wondering what this means. Relative atomic mass is the mass of an atom of an element. For example, hy hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1. Carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12. The relative atomic mass is the amount of protons add the number of neutrons. The amount of protons always stays the same. However, the amount of neutrons can change. Now, this raises more questions. You might be thinking, what is a proton or a neutron? Well, a proton and a neutron is inside the nucleus of an atom, and electrons orbit them in shells. The first shell can hold two electrons, the next shell can hold eight, and then the next can hold temporarily 18, and then eight. An example of this is carbon. Carbon has six electrons, and because it must be the same as protons, it has six protons. As you can see from this diagram, the first shell holds two electrons. The next shell only holds four, because that's all the electrons carbon has. Usually, when they are drawn in a diagram, electrons travel in pairs so it's easier to count them and to see them. So now you know why the periodic table looks like it does. But what's in the periodic table? On the left, we have the elements that are the most reactive in a column. As we get further right it, in the columns, it becomes less reactive until, on the right, we reach the non-metals. And then, on the very right of the table, we see the noble gases. The noble gases were quite hard for scientists to discover, as they don't react with anything at all, so it's very hard to even know if you have them. Now, in the periodic table, there are a lot, a lot of elements, but there is one easy way to remember all of the elements. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium.
There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. There's honium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercanium and molybdenum and magnesium dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead praseodymium and platinum plutonium palladium promethium potassium polonium and tantalum technetium titanium tellurium and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, berkelium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, krypton, neon, radon, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. And there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. Yes, and that was how the periodic table was formed. Hey guys, it's Josh. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be a bit stereotypical here of a YouTube video and say if you liked it be sure to click the like button and if you liked it so much that you want to favourite it, click the favourite button. If you want to see more of these sorts of videos, click subscribe. Thanks! There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium.